For living creatures to thrive in caves, there needs to be no more water. Living creatures enter the cave when the cave dies. It's like a handing over. As the cave ends its life, it makes way for living things. The Rhone Alp region is home to a deep canyon, the Gorge de l'Ardèche. This steep sided gorge is about 30 kilometers long. Down below, the river glistens. It meanders across the plateau, twisting and turning along the way. Situated at the entrance to the gorge is the Saint Marcel Cave. With its 60 kilometers of galleries, it is one of the biggest, reddest caves in France. It's a fantastic exploration ground for speleologists. My name is Ludovic Mokocin. I'm a geologist and, more specifically, a karstologist. A karstologist is someone who studies cave formations. The first time I saw a cave, I was in shock. I saw this gaping black hole open up before me, and it awoke a desire in me for adventure, discovery and exploration. I started out as a potholer, and then it only seemed natural for me to become a geologist who specializes in caves. Ludovic Mokouchin has studied the formation of the Saint-Marcel cave. It was hollowed out in two consecutive phases due to changes in the sea level 5.9 million years ago. When I first entered the Saint-Marcel cave, I found it overwhelming. It was very scary. The cave has 60 kilometers of galleries arranged in tiers. Its history is very complex. It took me years to understand it, to piece its history together from the information I had and from my observations. Here we are in what I would describe as a paragraph in the cave's history, because stored in this sedimentary rock is a record of a sequence of geological events. You can see them in the strata. The rock might look uniform, but when you look closely, you realize there are variations in the colors in the strata. Here underground, we have a slightly different record of the events that have occurred on the surface. For example, there might have been periods of heavy rainfall, hence the rougher elements getting swept along. And when you get finer elements, such as this red clay, you know the weather was calmer outside. More extensive studies in the laboratory will allow us to determine whether these weather cycles were annual or on a scale of 10 years, 100 years or even 1,000 years. These underground cathedrals are a rich source of information about the history of the Earth and the way its climate has changed. As we pass through the cave, we come up against obstacles. There might be a big pit, or a narrow opening that's difficult to get through, or a low passageway, or water. These obstacles are never very enjoyable to overcome. But on the other side, you know you will find other galleries to discover and more explorations to lead. I'd almost say that the obstacle is the gateway to a new world. The reward for overcoming the obstacle is new discoveries. The red color underground comes from an iron oxide, which is caught in the sediments. And this iron oxide comes from the erosion of the soil on the surface. What's interesting about this red is that it is evidence of a geological event that's taken place. In this instance, it was a brutal drop in temperature during a pivotal period at the end of the Pliocene, two million years ago, and the start of the Quaternary, so the start of glaciations. 
So when you look at this very red clay underground, you can see the transition between a very warm, wet climate to a much colder climate. The cave died three million years after it formed. Its galleries now fulfill another function. For living creatures to thrive in caves, there needs to be no more water. Living creatures enter the cave when the cave dies. It's like a handing over. As the cave ends its life, it makes way for living things. These scratch marks here were made by a bear. While it was hibernating, the bear must have stretched out and scratched the sides of the cave. A full stretch, a sleeping bear could measure up to six meters, and some of the biggest bears to live in that era, they weighed up to a ton. The Ardèche has about a dozen famous caves. The ones with cave paintings in them are closed to the public. These examples of prehistoric art must be preserved at all costs. Ludovic is about to have a once-in-a-lifetime experience visiting one of these caves with archaeologist and prehistorian Bernard Gelli. It was discovered in 1963. It's a cave. You don't get scared in caves, do you? I'll let you climb up first. Right, let's go. Go ahead. Don't you think cavemen use the ladder too? The cave paintings start here, so don't touch the walls. Mind your head, there's a low point. I'll go first here. This is the most fragile part. It's just back here. Careful, it's a bit slippery. We're entering the site of an excavation done in the 1960s. The prehistoric Paleolithic paintings here include this big wild bull. These big curves are ibexes, but you can only see the horns, the, the beginnings of the head. This is classic in Paleolithic art. Artists used the fault lines in the walls, the cupules, the cracks, the joins in the strata, the concretions, and so on. They integrated them into their animal figures, or used them to represent the ground, for example. Bernard, have these paintings been accurately dated? The paintings themselves haven't been dated because the pigments used, the red amongst others, are mineral pigments, so we can't date them accurately. On the other hand, and this is very significant, we're walking on ground that was excavated a few years after the painting was discovered. And that excavation site revealed the soil the artists walked on, because we found drops of colorant corresponding to a time when there were still aurochs, according to our chemical analyses. As for the charcoal, these particles were carefully analyzed and aged at around 21,000 years ago. The middle of the Ice Age, the middle of the Ice Age. That was basically the coldest point of the last glaciation. It's very strange because La Samasar cave doesn't have any paintings in it. You get a sense of humans passing through it from the archaeological digs conducted at the entrance to the cave, but the deeper into the galleries you go, the less of a human imprint there is. Whereas here, you realize that humans have been coming into this cave for thousands and thousands of years. So it's very meaningful for us, because we're not the first people to set foot in it. We aren't explorers. We're rediscovering a place our ancestors inhabited tens of thousands of years ago. As he walks the length and breadth of the caves in the Ardèche, Ludovic is following in the footsteps of the Neanderthals, who were already exploring these galleries between 38,000 and 90,000 BC. Mm -hmm. 